anyway, this is part two because somebody just called me and I don't even know who that person is. So I have to talk to them later. Like, it's always something. You call me again. Like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, it's always something. And this is very important because this involves my ethnicity. Um, I was not born um, in white skin. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't born in dark, dark skin. So, with my ethnicity in this country, every time... We, I step foot in the building. Every time I go somewhere, it's all eyes on me, all eyes on me. And yes, I'm beautiful, but there is also um, there is also a lot surrounding my ethnicity and the persecution of what they have been doing to us. So there was people chasing me around in my vehicle, um, moving in the house next door to me just to harass me when I got my inheritance. They was posting eviction notices on my door when my rent was paid. Um, they did all kind of wickedness. And when I lost everything and I ended up on the streets in Magnolia, Texas, it was because they had did operations around me, several different people, people who I was close to. If I would have just shut them out of my life, then I would have been all right. But I wouldn't have given birth to my son because I met my child father after I lost everything. Um, and... My son was the best thing that ever happened to me. And everybody knows that. So um, what I was saying, like going back towards my ethnicity, I already felt like before I gave birth to my son, before I got pregnant with him, I was like, man, I'm finna die on this planet because I'm African, I'm American. And these black men, they just do us so wrong and they oppress us in such a way that I can't even really go into details to that right now because I'm not by myself. But um, I'm in the bathroom by myself, but I'm not in the house by myself. And so um, the white people, the Hispanic, it was so much racism and capitalism. You know, people just willing to do anything for a dollar, you know, that when I seen them put in this African-American female at the very bottom of everything in the society to where that was beating us. Like while we was going to work, while we was doing what we were supposed to be doing, actually loving God, you know, and living righteously, they all was over there just beating us, beating us, beating us, beating us, all in the community, all over the media, you know, and it let me know that they want to kill us. It let me know. I saw it on the news. I seen it. I ran from police for no reason. I lived it. You know what I'm saying? So... I had never given birth to a child. I had never conceived a child. And I was over there like these white women, these white folks, these evil ass blacks, these fucking Mexicans that's racist. They out here trying to kill us. We got jobs. We got cars. We got money. And that goes back to the Tulsa, Oklahoma shit. Like we had more shit than a lot of them did. And I was like, y'all motherfuckers, I was like, I knew. I was like, they want to kill us. After I lost everything, and I was walking the streets on Magnolia, in Magnolia, Texas, looking at these racist white people that knew that I had everything that I needed. And now I'm walking the streets. I knew then I was like, I have to give birth because I ain't never given birth to a child. I ain't never even conceived a child. And they attacking us as the women of the ethnicity of people that they don't like. And we the young women growing up being attacked because they don't want us having kids in this society. And I said, well, if they're going to kill me, I'm going to leave a part of me behind. And I had never conceived. So when I met my baby daddy, he was the male in my life. And I got pregnant by him because my survival was on the line. And I knew that I would be killed. So I went on ahead and conceived and gave birth to the boy. And I gave up everything for the boy. And I stood with him every step of the way. Until his daddy was attacking him. And I shot him. Because that little boy mean more to me than anybody. Because I know why I gave birth to him. And I know why I conceived him when I did. Because they was trying to make us extinct on this planet. So it didn't matter who I made it with. But I did mate with somebody who I felt would protect us in the midst of what was going on. And that would make sure that, that, that I would give birth to him and he would have some people who could provide for him. Because I knew the state of America. 
So that's why I allowed Joseph and Cynthia to help us. It wasn't because I was some no good ass baby mama. I was being persecuted for my ethnicity and me and my baby, we needed that help. And I could have been killed. I could have been hung in a jail cell. You know, anything could have happened and I wouldn't have been able to leave a part of me behind. So when I was in that cell, God said, take my son into your kingdom, Satan. But do not kill him. And if you're going to kill me, I will not denounce Jehovah. And I will not denounce Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. And you can kill me. But do not kill my boy. And this is serious. So I don't care about anybody who say that, oh, Mama Jones is um, too, too out there. That's my baby. And they knew that if we take him from her, she don't have nothing to live for. She don't have nothing. Because he was all that I was living for. He was the reason why I did not go to battle with these people and let these people kill me before I had them. And Jesus Christ said the color of her skin and her curly hair is what got her in all this trouble. And people want to say I got a lot of mouth. That's what didn't know. I didn't start talking shit. Until I started standing up for myself. They was abusing me all along. And I was being quiet about it. But now I'm not. So people got a problem with it. And that's okay. So I wanted to bring my second child into the world. And they didn't want to allow that. By torturing me and lying on medical records. And, you know, doing, doing things to have people around me to think they're going to fuck with me and silence me. Now, as far as um, me having to leave the boy behind and wanting to just do my music and stuff like that, when I think about what people could have done to my son and think about, like, how, oh, he might go to school or is he all right? And, you know, I think about all these things. I know what their ultimate agenda was when they was bothering me was to kill me. When I had that boy and we was doing good with one another and they was chasing me and harassing me with my son, they put us in situations where me and him both could have been killed trying to steal him from me. So when I said I felt like a gorilla running through the jungle with my young on my back while these white folks were chasing me, I want my child back. And I will give all the information that I need to give on Judge Tracy Gilbert. And this is why I need to give the information on the jail cell that they had me in, the jail that I was in, the nurses who lied on my medical records, everybody that was involved with helping the Ku Klux Klan take my baby away from me. So I said, you know what? I might as well go ahead and do me a song. I might as well because... I have a lot of people, family and friends who want me dead just because they don't want to see me have no success in the music industry. And that's a whole nother topic. So for all these people to have been putting me out on the streets and beating me up because I had a dream. Do you know how many motherfucking men took advantage of me because I had a dream and y'all put me out? Because I had a dream to do something that you felt was better than whatever the fuck you was doing with your life. And I I worked. I had my own place. I always had my own place since I was 18 years old. And this is why I said the oppression is really what stopped it. So now I'm like, okay, well, I already know people that did so much stuff to me that they know at some point it's going to go down. If you don't do right by me and my kids. And that's what they waiting on. And I'm like, bro, I hate it. I ain't never been the one to fight. And anytime somebody done back me into a corner, they done got their ass whooped. They done got their ass handed to them. And then you want to sit over there and try to do it again, thinking I'm not going to win the battle again. So it's like they just keep bullying people and bullying people and bullying people and then want to try to outcast you and exile you to some people that don't even know you and then have you over there talking about all your problems around people that claim to not even fucking know you. Like that is making you a nuisance to people that are trying to help you. 
and then try to ghost town me and rob me and steal from me and abuse my child and abuse me when I was pregnant and then sit over here and think that you're going to exile me and make me afraid to come back for my baby? So that's why I want to go ahead and do me a song and I do want to do me a video. But I don't want the boy to be getting hurt and I don't want stuff to be going on behind the scenes while I'm trying to get to him. But I know if I go ahead and go out, it's a high possibility that I'll be killed just on the strength of everything they did to me and the baby. And what they possibly have been doing to my son because they know I'm going to expose it, you know. So I'm like, well, let me just try to do me a song. Let me try to do me a video. You know what I'm saying? And then go hard for my son and, and fuck everybody else. Fuck living or dying. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not finna ask nobody to come out here with to Texas with me. I'm not finna ask nobody to have my back. I, I'm not. And, and point blank period, I don't even want to go through no more courts because they had the Ku Klux Klan doing stuff in the courts and then hiring black people to do stuff to me on the streets. Uh, don't let her in the shelters, put her out your house, don't nobody help her, you know, on some bullshit. And then want me sitting around in that fucking bonnet, you know, with my lashes all falling off, looking all ugly and nasty and shit. Or try to have me looking pretty walking around on the streets like, oh, just some bum bitch ass prostitute. I ain't where I want to be. I haven't pulled myself together. And I'm going to tell y'all another thing. I like to dance. And you want to know why I like to dance? Because dancing is part of me. I'm a female. It's my femininity. It's my body. It's what I like to do. It's what I want to do. And nobody don't have no right to categorize me as any fucking thing. So if you see me dancing or having a good time, then because I got to clear my fucking mind sometimes. And I got to have a good time sometimes. Ain't no lawyers coming out the fucking woodworks to help us. Ain't no judges coming out the woodwork to turn over no uh no orders that, that was fraudulent. Ain't no family coming out the woodwork to help me. Ain't no niggas coming out the woodwork to be like, oh, we're going to stand up for your son. Ain't nobody doing that shit. So when I decide that I want to have me a little good time, I ain't in no motherfucking club sitting around getting drunk with a Heineken in my motherfucking hand. So if I want to just sit there and have me a little good time, then that's just what the fuck I'm going to do. And I love music. I have always loved music. You know, so um, I got to go. I got to go. Um, I'm going to be making some videos Uh some more videos showing y'all pictures of me and my son, hopefully soon, um, because they've been trying to do stuff on my channel and have people doing little shit around me to where it'll fuck with my content. And this really have been all about my son. But while I was putting out videos about my son, they was over there praying on my hair, praying on my face, praying on my clothes, trying to starve me, trying to start fights around me. Y'all seen that shit. You know what I'm saying? So... They even got motherfuckers trying to talk about my fucking tooth. I had I had the tooth in my mouth when I was in the jail and when I got out the jail. I didn't get no medical care. I didn't have no fucking vitamins, no none of that shit. And my body fucking ate itself. And then when I got out the jail, they was doing me all kind of way and I ended up losing the fucking tooth. So if anything, I want them to pay for that shit. You know, but other than that, I'm not worried about that. I'm just so happy. I'm so proud of God for revealing himself. To me, you know what I'm saying? Because it was very hard living on the planet with a bunch of wicked ass motherfuckers. And I really don't want to cut this camera off, but I got to go. It was very hard for me to live on a planet with a bunch of evil ass motherfuckers constantly doing shit to me since I was a little girl. And then nobody to stand up for me. So when they took me in a fucking jail cell and thought they was going to kill me and my child back there, it meant a lot to me for God to finally stand up for somebody to stand up for me. And he did that. So if y'all want to continue to run around and be wicked as hell, and y'all want to continue to try to call me a prostitute, and you want to continue to try to talk shit about Andrea Jones, you do that. You go right on the fucking head. Because I look good on her boo. And I know that's why you hate me. And that's why you did all the shit that you did.